Hi, I'm David Harry, and in this particular video, I'm going to be testing this microphone, which is the Behringer Ultra Voice XM8500. Now, within the tests, what I'm going to be doing is I'll do some stuff indoors and I'll do some stuff outdoors. Um, I'm also going to be testing the microphone in its kind of truest sense, and that is I'm not going to apply any pre processing before it goes into the camera. Um, I'll also not be applying anything in the edit system, so like no no, no normalising, no compression, no EQs, nothing like that. So whatever we hear through the entirety of these tests is the microphone as is. Okay, so just a, a brief about the microphone. It's um, quite possibly one of the cheapest, uh, decent, uh, handheld uh, dynamic microphones that you can buy. It is obviously modelled on the Shure SM58. Um, I'm not. This isn't going to be an AB against the 58, but it's obvious where Behringer have you know t took the nod for design from, and this is it now in its basic like configuration, which is just the microphone with the cable plugged straight into the camera. Now this microphone cost 16 pounds on Amazon, including uh, postage. And I think $20 in the US as well. Uh, I'll have links as well in the descriptions where you, where you can go and grab one of these mics if you're interested in them. Okay, so for the first test that I'm doing, this is it. How is it indoors and whatnot, just being used as a handheld mic. And the reason why you might want to use it like this is just because you might be doing a piece to camera with a handheld mic like this. Um, you might just be doing like a bit of news gathering or something like that. So it could be good for like ENG type stuff, electronic news gathering. Um, also, it could be good for like, you know, doing interviews, passing pass backward and forward the microphone. Now, like I say, this is the most basic of scenarios that it can be used in, which is just the mic as is. But the one thing that I would always suggest is to use a pop filter or a pop shield with microphones like this so from here on in i'm going to be using this pop filter so let me just put it on okay so now i've got the pop filter on now i would recommend this as kind of like the minimum addition to any kind of like dynamic handheld microphone or anything that's going to go this close to your mouth now also for the purposes of doing this type of thing to camera you don't really want the microphone kind of sticking right in front of your mouth um, so what you would do, you would have the mic kind of in this position that I've got it in, below your mouth, and just kind of like pointing up at your mouth. Now, the other thing with these mics as well is that these are cardioid patterns, which means that they basically get their sound captured from, or they capture their sound mainly from its front. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to do a quick test to see what it rejects from behind to the front. One, two, three, four five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that'll give us an idea of the type of rejection that it has behind it. Because um, these mics are normally used for kind of like stage use and stuff like that, but there's no reason why they can't be used in this scenario for like interviews as well, or voiceovers, or podcasting, or vlogging. They, they, they're very, very versatile. Okay, so what I'm now going to do is get, get on with some more of the other tests to do with this mic. Now, what, what's happened since I started the tests with the mic, I've actually been using it now for a few days. So I've managed to acquire a fair bit of stuff. Now, partly through these tests, I'd initially not had the foam filter on it. So the assumption was in some of the tests that there was no foam filter. So I've included them still because there's some interesting results with them. And then there's some more outdoor stuff with the foam filter on. Um, oh, one last thing I'll do indoors as well. Or two last things. Uh, I'll do a, a like a pop or plosive test with the microphone. Then I'll do a silence test. So what I'm going to do, plosives are like the bump noises that you get when you use P and B. So let me just try this. I'll do the P's and the B's with the filter on and I'll take it off. So P, B, 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 P, B. P, B, P, B, P, B, P, B, P, B, P, B, P, B. Now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put the mic right in front in line with my mouth and then I'll do the same plosive test with that as well. PB, 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 PB. Actually, I'll do some breath going into it as well just to see how it handles that. So this is just like a light wind as it were. Thank you. 
And now what I'll do, I'll just leave it open in the room without me talking and we'll see what its hiss level is like on the microphone. Okay, so that's probably enough of the indoor stuff. So what I'm going to do now is just continue with some of the tests that I've been doing over the last couple of days outdoors, and then we'll come back and I'll do a little summary on the microphone as well. Okay, so as you can see, I'm outside now, and um, this is a very, very real-world test because um, I'm just down the road, and I'm right down by the, the shores of the, of the River Mersey here, down in Port Sunlight. <laughs> Yeah, see, it doesn't get much more real than that. <laughs> okay, so I've moved up now from the shore of the River Mersey, only because there was a boat there blowing its horn and stuff, and, like, the, the wind's going to be, you know, a bit more worse down there. Now, where I am here at the moment, this actually, this is uh, Brotherton Park, which is uh, Spittle Bromber away on the Whittle. Um, now, where I am here... Uh, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm kind of like, you know, got a bit more kind of around me. So the wind's not as bad, but it's still there. So unfortunately, we may still get some wind stuff, and that's only because, like I said earlier, I've not got a traditional foam pop shield, or you know, yeah, windbreak or whatever you want to call them, on this microphone. But what I have done, I've left the the, the metal mesh on it as well. Um, so this should help me with plosives and stuff. Now the other thing as well, when you're outside you would normally need to use a higher gain as well by comparison to what you know what you would have done indoors but again just for the sake of transparency I've left it all exactly the same indoors because that you got so much reflection going on it will you know you will get the perception that things are a bit louder when you're recording them whereas with outdoors all your sound waves are just going to keep traveling so you know you're not going to get the same propagation of stuff coming back onto the mic as what you would do indoors Anyway, with all this talk that I'm doing, this should give us a really good indication as to what the microphone sounds like outside for doing this type of work. Now what I'll do, I'll do like a bit of a, um, a noise test as well. So I'm going to hold the microphone away from me uh, just for a few seconds so we can see what the inherent uh, like noise level is like. Um, now bear in mind where I am, there's, there's, uh, it's like loads of birds and stuff. It's really cool down here. It's like, you know, you really feel you, you're one with nature. Uh, so there will be bird noises and stuff, but don't worry about that. All right, so that'll give us an idea of uh, like noise on the microphone itself. There's also, I think, a kids' school over that way, so you probably hear the kids screaming as well. Yeah, so anyway, I think this is probably going to give us enough uh, to get a good gauge of what it what it's like outside. I'm not going to do any of the other tests that I did indoors because we we, we know what the off-axis stuff was like and all the rest of it. We've already done the, the wind and plosive tests, but like I say less windy here than what it was down at the river and hopefully this might be uh, good enough anyway you know without the pop shield on okay thanks okay so i'm outside now doing a test with the uh, with the behringer and what it is i've just got this completely handheld and like n no like you know no pop shield or anything on it so it's completely open to the elements and stuff which is not really the best way to handle a microphone like this so now what i'm going to do is just kind of simulate doing an interview type thing with somebody again just to see you know if this particular microphone would be useful for that particular scenario so anyway gary yeah where are we and can you tell me a little bit about it well we're in the refreshment rooms in rock ferry uh was the admiral and a funny little boozer really but it's, it's a restaurant now it's very nice the food's amazing to get yourselves down here uh, plenty of offers on they've got a nice beer garden plenty of real ales friendly staff like myself of course when i actually do have a little go but uh, apart from that we're right, right on the banks of the river mersey uh, and like i say beautiful little place good spot i can vouch for it it's awesome the view's amazing of liverpool so in this particular scenario, what I'm doing, I'm just going to see how useful the mic would be if it were just set between two people to see if it would actually capture a conversation properly. Now, although the microphone is cardioid and it's polarisation pattern, it's not like a super or a hyper or anything like that. So it's just a standard cardioid. So it may well be useful for actually capturing you know, like a fairly wide field in front of it. So anyway, Gary. Yes. How long have you lived around here for? Ooh, decades now. Um, um, yes, to David. Uh, 
About 25 years, formerly from the uh, little village down the road on the river called Eastham. Very nice little hamlet. Oh, is that where you're from, Eastham? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I didn't realise that. I came that. up these ways. Well, yeah, you'll have well, told me that before, yeah. and I just wasn't listening. Well, probably, Dave. You know, not people, a lot of people around here don't listen, actually, especially to me. <laughs> I'm not from around here. No, I don't well, there you go. You're all right. Then you get off the hook, then. <laughs> Excuse the pun being by the river. <laughs> all right, it's been a couple of days since I did the, that last take, and what I've done, I've actually waited to get all of a pop shield, so I've now got a pop shield on the microphone. Now, Basically, a pop shield is designed to stop certain things to do with your voice, like the P's and the B's and what have you. But being outside, it can also assist with like reducing the amount of wind as well. Um, now, it's not these are not designed to you know to actually take wind out completely, but they will actually you know assist with taking the wind. So it's a little bit windy where I am at the moment. So this should give us an idea of what this is going to be like with the pop shield on. So again, this is like its most basic configuration. So it's a 16 pound microphone with a one pound pop shield, and in US terms, that's about 21 dollars. Um, yes, yeah, so this is kind of like. Pfft, I mean, you could get cheaper than this, but I don't know as to like how good it's going to be. But for me personally, I think this sounds ace. I have listened to some of the takes, and like you know, I'm going to do a summary as well. But you know, so far in my test of this microphone, I think it's absolutely fantastic for this type of work. Now, the one thing I'm just going to do quickly is do it um, like a plosive test outdoors with it, with the with the uh, with the mic pop shield on it as well. So I'll just go. P B P B P B P B P B P B P B P B P B P B P B P B P B P B P B P B P B P B all right, and just another quick test as well, and this is just putting the microphone straight in line with my mouth. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to try another plosive test again. Now, although this isn't going to look amazing for like on camera stuff like this, this is more like what you would be like in a studio doing voiceover or doing like you know vocal work or something, because the proximity that you are to the microphone like this, and as long as you got the gains right, I mean I don't know whether I've got the gains right here, so we might be distorting a bit. I'm not entirely sure, but usually you would have the mic in this position for doing some kind of like voiceover stuff or vocal work and what you would do you just make sure that you got the game right at the you know at your console and stuff so yeah this is the best way to record a microphone as far as its sound is concerned but in the in this instance where we're like doing a piece to camera not necessarily the best one because it you know because the mic's in front of your face and whatnot but let me just try the plosive test again like this and we'll just see how effective that this foam actually is P B P B P B P B P B P B P B P B P B P B P B P B P B P B P B P B Okay, so this is probably enough of a test outside now for the microphone with the pop shield on. And at the moment, it's still a bit windy. So we should be still getting a little bit of rumble on the capsule and stuff. But hopefully, the pop shield has actually taken a lot of that out as well. Okay, so to summarise, well, I think this microphone has just sold itself, um, and quite literally sold itself. Uh, for £16 or $20, I mean, this seriously has got to be one of the biggest no-brainers for buying a microphone. Um, through the various tests that I've done, you'll have seen a lot of characteristics of the mic. Uh, you'll have seen how versatile it is. Um, you'll kind of get a gauge of more what it can do as opposed to what it can't do, which is always a good thing for a microphone. Um, another thing with, the, with it being dynamic, because it doesn't require any power, it'll also get you out of scrapes where you're using a camera that either can't supply power or you might be on a condenser mic and you've run out of power, either battery or external power. So a dynamic will always get you out of a bit of a sticky situation where power's concerned. Now, Whilst its sound is not going to be the same as like a shotgun or something like that, its versatility is probably way more. Um, you can use them in many different scenarios like we've been showing. And also right now, the way I've got this set up, hold on, right, we're on a suspend, an, an elastic suspension cradle on a scissor stand and uh, we've got the foam filter on and then also I've got the wire mesh filter on the front. Now this might be... Um, Fairly much ideal for voiceover work, uh, vlogging, podcasting, and, and all kinds of stuff. I mean, I see vloggers who work like this as well. So again, this could be an ideal scenario for vlogging as well. 
Okay, so I don't think there's really much else I can say in the summing up because we've kind of proved what the mic can do all the way through these tests. Um, yeah, so if you fancy one of these mics, there's going to be links below, and I'll do some links for some of the other bits of gubbins I've been using as well. So, yeah, uh, last words on it. Go out and buy one. They're brilliant. Okay, well, thanks again very much for watching my video. Take care. Goodbye now.